The EOTech G45 is EOTech's flagship magnifier. This is a 5X model that is made in the US, and they're typically $650. And they come with a standard tilt away mount, not this unity fast drop down mount. There are some key differences between this and the G30 or the G33, but more or less, it's basically the same thing, just a little bit larger. With being a little bit larger, it's also a little bit heavier, but that's to be expected, again, just from its girthy nature. From an external point of view, this thing is very nice. The rubberized coat is something that you find typically on all of EOTech's magnifiers, and it is a nice little touch, because if you do have to grab it and it's wet or something like that, or your hands are cold, at least you're grabbing something that's rubberized and warm, so this way you have a little bit better traction on it. The turrets on this are the same found on the G43, even though I haven't reviewed the G43 yet. It's easy to look at pictures and see that they are basically the same. And compared to the G33 or the G30, which is now discontinued on EOTech's website, probably because that was made in China as opposed to these all now being made in the US. But these are much lower profile turrets and they are a little bit more challenging to turn, which means that you probably won't have to worry about them being bumped out of alignment accidentally. These also come with a standard two bolt mount, which is why you see it in a unity mount as opposed to a tilt away mount. Contrast that with what you typically find in the house on HM3X and you will be very glad that you find it in this. And for the $650, I expect nothing less. As for the weight on this thing, EOTech claims 12.8 ounces, but that is with the mount. Here with the unity mount, you can see it comes in just over 14 ounces. And we know that unity mount is about five and a half ounces. So that's about a nine ounce magnifier by itself for any of you wondering. Like I said earlier, this thing is a little bit of a chunky boy, but when I put it side by side with the Holosun HM3X, you'll see that it's actually not that much larger. Overall length is actually a little bit shorter on this as opposed to the HM3X, and the lenses look kind of sort of similarly sized, but I do believe they are a little bit larger on the G45. A lot of the girth on the G45 is due to the rubber housing on it, so it makes you wonder, why is it so much heavier? It's probably because the glass inside is a lot better quality which we will be taking a look at very soon. But before we get there, let's go over the rest of this thing's external features, starting with the eyepiece. This is a non-locking fast focus eyepiece. It does have very fine threads. You could see how much I have to turn it for it to really be perceivably moving in or out. There is a very minor amount of play, but it's so minor I barely even question why I bring it up. It feels fantastic. There's no weird sounds. There was no weird hiccups, it didn't feel like there was any grit inside of it. It was smooth and tight, as good as you could possibly get on a fast focus eyepiece. Moving on to the last real external component, the turrets. Like I had already briefly touched on, these are vastly superior to the G30 and G33 turrets. Not only are they lower profile, but slightly larger diameter, they are tensioned much, much tighter. These actually require a fair amount of force to turn. Plus that little rubber boot that's on the outside of this thing helps make it a little bit harder to get your fingers on there. For many of you, that'll be a disadvantage because you want to have giant, exposed, non-locking, non-detended target turrets on a magnifier. And I get it. You want to switch your magnifier from one gun to another gun to another gun to another gun. That's fine. But some people like myself would, write, would rather it just be like a set and forget type deal. It's not that hard to have a shell casing or a coin or an actual plastic adjuster tool in your bag or on your person to adjust your turrets as needed. So for you, this will probably be the best of both worlds, or at least it is for me. They are still exposed non-locking, but they are much harder to turn and harder to grasp, but they're still easy enough to grasp if you really needed to. In my opinion, it really is the best of both worlds if that's what you're looking for. And with that, there isn't really much else to talk about this thing physically. It feels really, really, really good. And for the $650 that this thing comes in at, it absolutely better feel really good. Anyway, let's see if the glass is up to the task at making this thing continue to be really good. I'm going to be changing up where I typically do all my filming and how I've been doing it for a very long time with this video for a couple of reasons. One, I no longer have access to a lot of places where I used to. And number two, I don't have all the footage that I originally took for this. This was 
later on when I'm, my wife and I were already starting to look for houses and I was just trying to get through some stuff and I forgot one or two minor segments. But ultimately, it's not the end of the world because the biggest concern is going to be just how good this thing looks, how well does it magnify something, and what the eye relief is like. Well, the eye relief is claimed at 2.6 inches, which is actually pretty friggin' impressive for a 5X magnifier. To put that in retrospect, a lot of the other magnifiers are typically between 2.2 to 2.5 inches, even on a 3X magnifier. So having that much eye relief between your eye and the back of the lens on this thing is pretty impressive. And here, with it deployed at 100 yards, focused in the center, and 200 yards up on top, you can see that we're already off to a pretty good start. This is a picturesque, perfectly beautiful, bright, sunny day with very few clouds. So thus, everything was going to work as good as possible. Cropping the image a little bit to take a closer look at those targets to see just how sharp this glass is, doing so yields a very impressive result. This thing is very sharp, especially when it's bright and clear out. However, if we add a little bit of cloud coverage, or rather a lot of cloud coverage, and a little bit later on in the evening, you'll see that it doesn't let in as much light as it does during the daylight. Well, no duh, no scope does. Is it a noticeable amount? I would say it is. Low light testing like this is a very good chance to see just how good the glass is in something. Is there a noticeable difference between how the image looks looking through it as opposed to not? There is, but it's still fairly minor. Is it the end of the world? Absolutely not, but it's something to keep note of. 5X magnifiers, 5X prisms, LPVO set to 5X, they're going to let in a little bit less light than they would at lower magnifications. That's just par for the course. Let's go back to our square range and put a little bit more distance between us and the targets, primarily from 100 to 200, from 200 to 300. Yes, those 300 yard targets are in a very deep canopy, but you can still see them and all the detail that they have fairly well despite how heavy and dark those shadows are. It is a very good performance. If you had this thing by itself, let's say you were using it as a monocle off the gun, it would serve you extremely well. And again, the eye box on it, even though I don't have as more elaborate of a video showing it as opposed to me explaining it, it's pretty good, all things considered, for a 5X. Is it as open and forgiving as a 3X? No. But is it as tight as like the Vortex Micro 6X? Well, absolutely not either. Having a magnifier look good by itself is one thing, but putting an optic in front of it and seeing how well it could magnify the optic, well, that's another. We're back here at our 400 yard brick building. It is overcast. You could see the haze to the air. And this is gonna be a problem with a 5X magnifier. Going from 3X to 5X almost doubles our likelihood of seeing twice as many imperfections with any sort of optic that we put in front of it. The first one is the Holosun 512 Gold Dot. This is an optic that I've used time and time again to showcase in front of multiple different magnifiers. And it has a fairly decent performance here. That center dot is never really that sharp, even under 3x magnification, but the image itself doesn't look too bad. There is a lot more blue tint with the 512, but that is inherent to the optic, not to the magnifier. Overall, it's not a terrible performance, and I also like that we don't see any bars on top or bottom. Every once in a while, despite the fact you have more magnification, which should see through the optic in a smaller light, sometimes it could still throw things off primarily with what we saw with the Vortex Micro 6X. But let's pull off the 512 and put another red dot in front of it that I feel has very good glass for the money. It is going to be the Lead and Steel LP1. This is one of their prototypes. It's the one that I've had since the beginning, and it's serial number like three. They've been wanting to send me a new one that's more modern production, which they do say is vastly improved over this. But even so... That's a really good looking image and reticle. The center dot I always found to be a little bit brighter than the ring on the LP1. I don't know if that's by design or not, but I do kind of like it because the center dot is where I'm mostly gonna be focused on anyway, but that still circle around it is a still bright enough in most environments to not be a problem. There's very little to no tint with the LP1 glass as well. And as you could see, it is nice, sharp and clear, even out to the 900 yard power towers off in the distance. I would label this combination as successful. But let's now remove the LP1 and put a much cheaper red dot in front of it. This is the Holosun 403C. 
I don't hate the 403C as a standalone red dot, but when you put a big magnifier behind it like this, the 5X or the 6X Micro 6X, which I keep on bringing up for a reason, it looks like this. It is completely unusable. There is something up with the optics inside where it just, it's not in focus. You can get it in focus by changing the rear diopter, so you can make it work, but it's nowhere near to the level of the other red dots that we just took a look at. And bringing up the Micro 6X one more time, I mentioned it in that video, the more magnification you have on a magnifier looking through a red dot, the more likely you are to increase all of its imperfections as well, which is not good. Last up, it is the Vortex Strike Fire 2. That's right, a blast from the past, ladies and gentlemen. And boy howdy, does this thing perform extremely well. Look at how good that image looks, all things considered. It's a fairly small tube, but a very wonderful looking dot. Just goes to show you that even though this is a fairly inexpensive red dot, it performs a lot better than some other ones from <clears throat> Hollow Sun, <clears throat> especially that 403C. So if you are looking to buy a inexpensive red dot and you don't care about size or weight, take a look at the Strike Fire 2 because that thing still slaps very hard. The comparison segment on this video is going to be quite short, only two. Up first is going to be the Trijicon 3X, which is a 3X magnifier that I really like for a couple of reasons. One, it's very small and fairly lightweight. Number two, it's made in the Philippines, which I'm a big fan of. And three, it's priced fairly well considering well, how well it performs and the build quality that it has. These come in around 400 bucks. The weight on them is about 6.5 ounces for the head, so about three ounces lighter than the G45. Eye relief is about the same at 2.6 ounces, uh, 2.6 inches rather, acclaimed for both of them. The length on the Trijicon is going to be almost an inch shorter at three inches. With the 512 in front of both of them, which one looks better to you? It's going to be the Trijicon. Why? because it's magnified less. You put 2x more on the Trijicon, it's gonna look exactly like how it does in front of the G45. Why am I comparing a 3x versus a 5x? Well, that's because I don't have any other 5x's nor 4x's, so I'm giving you one below it and one above it. The Trijicon is a great little product, but it is smaller, lighter, and only 3x. So if you really want the 5x, well, you're kind of stuck there. There are other options, I just haven't got my hands on any of them to review, so keep that in mind. However, if you're stuck between a 3X magnifier and a 5X magnifier, the pros and cons, well, they're as simple as this. The more magnification you have in it, the more likely it is to look like shit. At least if you're running a very inexpensive red dot in front of the magnifier. Something like the LP1 here looks pretty good in front of the G45, but really good in front of the Trijicon. We also had better lighting conditions when I filmed with the Trijicon. There was much less haze in the air, but other than that, they're both perfectly adequate in a situation like this when they're both behind a fairly qualitative optic. Again, the pros and cons between these two stretch long and deep. So if you're on the fence about which one to get, I suggest doing your research and figuring out really in your heart of hearts what it is you really need. Sometimes less really is more, especially when it comes to field of view. Where the Trijicon claims to have 37.5 feet at 100 yards, the G45 is a measly 23.1, which actually is still really large considering that it's a 5X versus a 3X. It's still three quarters, basically, the field of view. So quite impressive overall. Could you guys guess what magnifier I'm going to talk about next? Of course it's the Vortex Micro 6X. I've mentioned it like 10 times. And the reason is, it's in line with my concept of less is more sometimes. Just because you have twice the magnification doesn't mean you're going to have twice the magnifier. It just means that you're going to see twice as many imperfections if, again, you put a red dot in front of it that isn't really good. You're also going to have a much tighter eye box and less light transmission. When I filmed with the Micro 6X, it was a fairly overcast day, similar to the G45, but a little bit later on in the evening. So as a result, we had some issues with shadows. Looking at the exact same optic, the 512, in front of both of these magnifiers, you could see what I was talking about with just how nasty the Micro 6X looks behind it. Yes, I know the height isn't perfect, but you can still see that there is a lot more going on with the image with the Micro 6X as opposed to the G45. As far as the Micro 6X, you could find those for around 400 bucks, whereas the G45 is around 650. So it is substantially more expensive than the Vortex product. 
Weight-wise, the Vortex is about two ounces lighter. Eye relief, they're about the same, or at least so they are claimed. I didn't really notice that much of a difference between the two. But the field of view is going to be much smaller with the Micro 6X at 19.4 feet as opposed to 23.1 feet. And here it looks even more so than that. Considering we have basically the exact same point of reference on both of these, you can see just how much less of an image you can see through the Micro 6X. If you really want to get into a larger magnifier size, uh, magnification wise, do not cheap out on it because you're going to, you're just getting lesser of a product in my opinion with the Micro 6X as opposed to the G45. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The main thing is going to be just that extra magnification throwing a wrench in the machine. Despite how good the Micro 6X looks behind the LP1, there's more to it than just image quality. The overall feel, the eye box, and the forgiving nature of the G45 is why I would pick that over the Micro 6X, despite the hefty price increase. I'm sorry, folks. I feel like I've let you down by not having more video to go along with this magnifier for the review but at least it's a simple magnifier review. There isn't a whole lot to a magnifier other than a couple of components physically and then how well it looks when you look through it and how well it magnifies an optic. If you have a really high quality magnifier like this G45, optically it's going to be fantastic and thus most red dot or holographics that you put in front of it will also be fantastic. I did not have my EXPS 3-0 when I filmed with this magnifier, and I'm upset about that, but I did buy one, so this way I had a full-on, one super high-quality holographic site to use for magnifier comparisons moving onward since this, and hopefully that'll be shown on the channel soon. In fact, my full review on that should be coming out soon. I just finished Moons Out Goons Out 24 with it, which is what I was waiting for before I could finish up with that review because I've mounted on my gun and used it and have loved it every step of the way. It's been a fantastic holographic sight. But I digress. This is a very good magnifier, as long as A, you want 5x magnification, B, you're okay with the price and or you don't care about the price because it's American-made and you want to support American-made products, I'm all for that. That's B. C, you're okay with its shortcomings, which is, despite the fact that the exit pupil on this thing doesn't seem that small and the eye relief isn't terrible it still has a fairly tight eye box again because of its magnification so just know its limitations the higher in magnification it's going to go and this is this falls in line with any magnified optic magnifier prism lpvo mpvo hpvo the higher up you're going to go the more likely of all those numbers being smaller and thus the harder and more difficult and challenging it will be to get behind said optic and the G45 is no exception. However, it is a fantastically built 5X magnifier. And if you are in the market for one, and like I said, you're okay with it, I think you could do far, far worse. And that's about as good of a recommendation as I can really give. Anyway, that is going to be all for this review. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, see you again next time. And a huge thank you to my Patreon providers and my Subscribestar subscribers. Without you, this truly wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to support my channel but don't want to join either of those, I completely understand. But you can still help by using my affiliate links in the description below, and or like, share, and subscribe as always. Again, thank you very much.